Let us write our first uh, Racket program. In Racket, uh, everything evaluates down to a value. So it's what is known as an expression-based programming language. So what we'll see is that this is a, in these boxes, I will give um, the syntax, the formal syntax of writing Racket. What you see is that there's this header uh, called hash, hash or pound lang, and then Racket, and then in the next line, you have zero more expressions. So what is an expression? That's what we'll learn today. A racket, as you will see, has no end of sentence delimiters. So for instance, in C or in Java, you have semicolons that delimit the end of a sentence uh, or a statement, how is, how is known there. Uh, in racket, you don't have such a thing. Uh, and as you, as it is customary, racket evaluates the, the program from top to bottom, left to right. Some programming languages don't define even an ex evaluation order, but in Racket we do, and that is crucial actually, it's very important in the homework assignment number one. So when you have this box, and you have the equals here, what we're defining is we are defining what a program is. And in a gray box, what you will see is the concrete syntax. Okay, so this is just some text that you have to write. And then italic uh, is just the structure. So here, when you have a star, it means you have zero or more expressions, right? So you have lang, bracket, and then zero or more expressions. And this is our how we specify what a program is. We still don't know what an expression is. We'll see that next. Okay. So uh, in italic, we see meta variables and by meta variables i just mean that these are like um, placeholders right this is not actually you don't write program or expression this just represents what an expression will be um, and that is known as a meta variable not really a variable of the program that's why meta is there um, and again gray out text just means code that you actually have to write Okay, so you kind of separate what is the structure of something, what is not. So what it, what kind of expressions can you write? So the first thing you can write is a value, and then the pipe here means or, and then dot 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 means something else we haven't specified yet. So when it what we what we mean by this box is that an expression, for now, is the only thing we we know that it could be is a value. Okay, so what is a value? A value is just um, you know, like literals and uh, numbers. So, for instance, numbers, right? So, a value could be, well, <laughs> in Racket, all numbers are complex numbers and blah, blah, blah. There's all this story about what, uh, how Racket um, specifies numbers there. And the only thing that really matters is that it's a floating point number. It does have a notion of an integer, and it does have also a notion of a fraction. Uh, and all of that is in the same number. It also has a notion of complex numbers. And, and that is important, as you will see in, in the next slide. So we'll take a, a bit of time to kind of go through an example and see what are all the possible numbers that you can write. Although we really don't, this is not a course about learning how to write uh, you know, what are the specifics about uh, racket numbers and how you write them, okay? So this is our first program. Again, pound lang and then racket, and this has to be in a line by itself, and then everything following that is an expression, uh, expression, 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 expression. Then you see semicolons, which are just comments, okay? So when I write this code, uh, you will see essentially multiple variations of or multiple possibilities of, of numbers. So you can see that there's a number 10 here uh, that is unsigned. So as usual, it's, it's assumed to be a positive number. And you can prefix with a plus. So it means the same thing than before. And you can also prefix with a minus. That means minus 10, right? The negative 10. And then you can also represent a complex um, number by putting 
the um, real and the imaginary part and you have to add a suffix with i for the imaginary part you can also write fractions and in this case one third right or you can write also floating points but here there's a few things that are important and i want to see by means of an example so first i'm going to uh, run this example and then we're going to do notice a few subtleties of this very simple program that just has lots of numbers so first thing that might be surprising for you is if you run this program first of all that you can just write numbers in the file and run racket and something happens right usually if, if you think about like uh, python or um or C or Java, like C and Java actually really require you to define a function uh, to be able to even write, run something. But in Racket, similarly to Python, you just write whatever you want and it will execute it. But unlike Python, it kind of actually prints out something. So this is when you run Racket, this is going to be the output. But let's see, let's see what's going on here. So if I change to this window, this is the editor that, I, that I'm using. And in this course, I really don't care what editor you use. You can use whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, this particular one is VS Code. Uh, and I use a very plain looking um, theme that just makes the contrast a bit better, hopefully, for you. So on the left hand side, you see the editor and you see the line numbers and you see the code. And on the right hand side, you will see the terminal. Okay. And I can write stuff here and it will appear. Uh, and uh, it's a Linux prompt. So in this course, I assume that you know how to, to, I expect you to know how to run the Linux prompt or the Windows prompt or the Mac OS prompt. So you, you need to use some prompt. Uh, if you want to use an IDE like Dr. Racket, that's up to you. Uh, just make sure you don't fall into traps of your particular IDE. Okay, so, because ultimately your uh, for the sake of the homework assignment, your script is going to be run in, in the grading software, not in your IDE. Okay. Okay, so this was kind of a digression. <laughs> Let's go back to the example in question. So what we have again is just six lines, six different ways to write numbers. Um, and the way I run it is hopefully you have racket on the command line. And then the way you run it is you do nums. Uh, dot racket because that's the file name here uh, and if I call racket um, I see the output exactly what I had in the um, in the slide right and I will note that okay so I have one two three four five six so I have one two three four five six uh, numbers being displayed I will note that by default the plus sign is doesn't show on screen so it's not displayed but the negative sign is uh, except when you have a complex number uh, where you know to distinguish between the the imaginary part you kind of use the plus sign or the minus part sign uh, and then if you write a rational number it does show up unchanged so we'll kind of see we'll, we'll play a bit with this expression to see how how it changes uh, and then you have a fixed point and one thing that is important to note is that these two numbers are not the same because one third means you know the infinite zero three 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 and here you're kind of it's a fixed uh point uh zero three three and exactly these two no these two uh, decimal points which is very different from three 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 as you know Okay, so let's play around with this to see what happens. So first of all, I'm gonna remove the comments. Okay. First of all, I'm gonna remove the comments. And I'm removing each comment. And I have the same code without comments. Okay, so I save it and I run it again and I have exactly the same output as you would expect, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write all the code here Okay. all in the same line right and if i run all the code in the same line what do you think is going to happen 
So if you recall in the, in the slides, I actually talked a bit about this. Actually, let's change the slides to see. So what we said here was that Racket evaluates expressions from top to bottom, left to right. So that's why the numbers are being shown in that order. But one thing that is important here is that Racket has no end of sentence delimiters, right? So it doesn't have a semicolon. So is this a valid Racket program? That's the question that I want you to think. So maybe pause the video and think about whether this is a valid Racket program or not. Or maybe even write it in your computer. Uh, so please pause if you want the video and then let's continue. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you paused. Um, and if you run this, because there is no end of sentence, right? There's no way to define what is the end of an expression. Um, for racket, is just any white space. So whether it's a end of line, you know, like a new line carriage or, or, or like before, it still shows the same thing, right? So it still sa shows the same expressions. They can all be in the same line. You can add spaces. Um, it just needs to have at least one space, right? So here, if I remove this, what happens? Well, now I get this funny thing that says this. It says unbounded identifier. So it doesn't like this. So if I add a space, you know, you might note that the syntax highlighting kind of changed and now it's bold because now it's something that it understands. And now it goes back to showing. Um, so you do need to have these space. So this is not 10 plus 10, right? So this was 10 plus 10, and it's not. It's kind of like an error. We're going to see how we can write 10 plus 10, but it's not this way. So if I do this, it does not mean 10 plus 10. So it does not showing 10 minus 10, right? It's actually just showing each number by itself, which is a bit weird or odd, right? Perhaps. So what if I do this? What happens? If I do this, hmm, if I do this, now I have this 10, 10 procedure. So what is this procedure? It's kind of weird, right? Uh, and we'll see a bit why that is happening next. Um, this is actually a function, as you will see. Plus is a function, except if you write it like this, then it's not a function. So what's the deal with this? Well, in Racket, um, what you see here are known as literals in many programming languages, which is like plain values without any kind of computation, right? What you see is what you get, right? So 0, 3, 3, that's what you get. 1 third, that's what you get. Then the plus doesn't show up here. Right, let, let me save and rerun this. This plus is not showing it here, but it's not like it's being evaluated. Like it's not like 12 that is running or something. Um, so this is known as a literal, right? Um, but if you have something like 10 plus 10, now this is an expression because you have to add 10 and 10 together to get 20, right? So that is different. So when you separate things, they kind of mean they have a different meaning, right? When you want to say plus 10, there is no space in between. Basically, that's the key point. So very different in this programming language when you write this than when you write this. They mean different things. That's just something to note. Okay. So if you ever want to write minus 10, you write it like this. Uh, another thing that is important to note is that when you have fractions, uh, you get always the smallest common denominator is that how, basically that you get the the when it's displayed it's going to be simplified so if i write uh three ninths it's going to be rendered as one third okay so the the fraction whenever you write a fraction you cannot write you cannot write one plus uh three divided by nine actually that does not work in racket uh, as you can see, it kind of shows. Oh, actually, does it show? That's very interesting. Let me see this. Ah, okay. So this doesn't work. Okay, yeah, this makes sense. So you cannot write these expressions in racket. So instead, you can write this. You can write plus three, and that would work. But if you try to do 1 plus 3 divided by 9, again, you get that weird error uh, where this is not how you write 
arithmetic expressions. And we'll see in the next slide how you do that. So you have to be careful with this. So basically, three key points that I want to make here is that uh, signs cannot be um, separated by spaces. So signing, positive and negative. Positive, negative. Secondly, what we want to say is that fractions uh, are displayed, are simplified. Simplified before being displayed. Uh, and thirdly, fractions are not uh, evaluated to Floydian points, right? Are not displayed as floating points. They are distinct values. Okay. So a lot of information here, right? A lot of things that can be said about numbers. So what we don't know is how do we uh, if write an arithmetic expression? That's what we would like to know, and we will learn that next. Okay. So let's see if I covered everything. We talked about numbers. We talked about the difference, the how you can order, how they render. I talk a bit about the space and the division here. Okay. So if you have spaces, again, is the same problem. Like if you have spaces here, that will also be a different thing. Be careful about that. Uh, and that's it. And in our next video, I'm going to cover a bit uh, about uh, function calls.